What's going on? What's going on, everybody? Yours truly here, the Brockton Credit Guy, the owner of the Peanut Credit Solution, and the author of number one new release book on Amazon, Unlocking Your Credit, where I explain everything about credit, finance, etc. As promised uh, to you guys, I'm going to continue to bring you valuable content in regards to credit, finance, budgeting, savings, etc. So if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Go ahead and set the notification to see, for all the notification whenever I put uh, content like this. And go ahead and like and share this like that other people. This is how it can help me spread the words, right? Um, so in this video, I want to specifically talk about one of the questions that gets so many people confused out there is why is there so many different credit score or different scoring models, right? Uh, there's a lot of confusion. You go to your credit card company, you see a score. You go to your uh, website from your experience, you see a score. You go to Credit Karma, you see a score. You go to Credit Sesame, you see a score. You go to any of your credit monitor in there, you see a score, right? You go to myfico.com, you see a score. So, so many confusion. And I want to make sure I come here, explain it to you guys, make sure you subscribe and like this channel. So uh, the reason why there's so many scores is because uh, it depends the what you're going to use the, the score for. So the bank might use a score for, for mortgage or might use it for uh, credit card application, auto, etc., insurance, etc. right? So there's different score model. But just to give you in a nutshell, the number one score models that's used out there, the algorithm that's widely used is your FICO model. It's been used, it's been the sole players uh, in the industry for many decades. FICO stands for Fair Isaac Corporation. Uh, Bill and Isaac, mathematician, engineer, got together, created a scoring al algorithm, created a scoring formula, where basically they go to TransUnion, Experian, you could have the credit reporting agency, grab the data, and then spit out um, uh, a three-digit number. Goes from Most of them goes from 300 to 850. Any score, obviously, the higher the score is, the better chance you get the best rate, best term, less down payment, etc., etc., right? Obviously, there's not too many people in the 300 credit score range, but uh, you see a lot of people, especially in my field, I see a lot of people in the uh, 500, 600 model uh, scoring uh, threshold, right? And those are people that have a lot of collection, charge up. So the reason why there's so many score, you have the FICO model. Within the FICO, basically what happened with FICO in 1950s, you know, Bill and Isaac got together, said, hey, let's uh, make it easier for people to, um, uh, for lenders to be able to see the credit worthiness of individual uh, score model going from 300 to 850. So basically they they got the score together, they got the formula all packed up, and then they sold this formula, licensed this patent, if you're saying, to to this to the credit bureau. And the credit bureau basically um, you know put it there, get the score, send it whenever the application for uh, your bank requests your your application for a mortgage auto loan, credit card, etc. right? And then obviously FICO gets a kickback from uh, the credit bureau, right? So around 2000, uh, 2006, the three biggest credit bureau, TransUnion, Experian, Equifax, said, we're tired of paying FICO so much money, right? Uh, when it comes to, to every application, why don't we create our own scoring model, our own algorithm, to calculate the score. So they came up with, now you're familiar with Vantage scoring model, right? So your Vantage scoring model is what you see Credit Karma uh, give you the information. Credit Karma only gives you the scoring uh, in Vantage model for TransUnion and Equifax, not Experian, right? And then obviously some of your credit cards company out there still use the FICO. But, but the thing, the challenge is, some of these banks, even though the three major credit bureaus, the three players uh, say, well, we're going to try to sell this score model to the bank, but only small percentage of banks 
you know, accept the, accept it. They say, well, no, we love uh, our FICO models. It's easier. We're used to it. We're not going to change our entire infrastructure just to, uh, you know, get the Vantage model. The Vantage model is more linear towards, uh, more relaxed, I should say. The, the Most of the weight are, are focused within the, the last two years, right? There's different scoring models that they use different factors to cal cal calculate the score, right? But within, for example, the FICO model, every year, obviously, FICO tweak uh, the models almost every other year, whatever it is, tweak the model, you know, for specific industry, for specific products and service. So that's why you're gonna be, so today that we're recording this video, we're mainly using FICO 8 model and that's what your discover for example will provide to you but they only provide you that fico model for your ex i believe experience if you go to your city they probably offer you fico for um transunion etc but the reason why the score also are different no matter what models you you pick is because the information reporting to, into your credit right so the information reported into your credit might not be the same across the board. For example, none of the bank are obligated to report information into your credit, but if they do, they gotta make sure they adhere by Fair Credit Reporting Act, right? Uh, that was enacted in 1970s, that they need to make sure the information 100% accurate, verifiable, and timely, right? So some banks might, my true say, you know what? I'm not gonna report to TransUnion. Uh, might only report to Experian, or they might give this information, or transmit this information to the credit bureau, but during the transmission, the information might be inaccurate. So obviously when the score model, either Vantage or FICO comes into play, when they grab the information, that's why you see the variation there with the score because the information is not reporting all three uh, across the board accurately. Or you might have a collection account, your gym, right? That you cancel a membership, you forgot to pay it. They might only report to TransUnion because every time they report, you gotta understand these three major credit bureaus are in the business of holding data. They in the business of basically selling information. Uh, they're multi-billion uh, dollar company. So, and public traded, right? So they want to make sure if you're going to report, you pay for it. If you're going to ask for that information back, you're going to pay for it. So, you know, obviously the worse your credit is, probably the more money they will charge, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why there's no uh, urgency on correcting the information on your credit unless if you go uh, get an expert to kind of dissect and see the errors, to kind of pinpoint the error like we do here, the credit solution, and be able to address it to get those items removed. So again, the reason why you see different scoring model is because one, you have a FICO, then two, you have um, Vantage. But within Vantage, they want to compete again. So they came up with Vantage 4.0, which a lot of you guys don't see it much. Um, and then FICO has within FICO, and then there's like bank card. I mean, what is bank card score, right? Bank card score is specifically for credit cards. Some credit card companies out there will use what they call bank card score, which is mainly probably derived from FICO 8, but it'll give you a score specifically for the credit card and your behavior on the credit card. For your auto industry, there's a uh, auto loan or FICO auto loan score. Um, you know, the bank sc score goes from like what, 200 to 900, um, you know, different different content, different algorithm, different formula that they tweak it specifically for that industry. Then you have your FICO 8, and then you have your FICO for your mortgage, right? Within the mortgage industry, uh, which is literally widely used, this is where penetrate the banks do not want to change this model because you have to understand that they have to to approve you on a model right and the fico model or in the credit score model and be able to sell that loan right into the marketplace 
for, for the ones that's using the same model. So it kind of mirrored the model they use. So it's really hard for a bank to get up today and say, hey, I'm gonna use Vantage. No, the entire infrastructure of credit and Square and Elder, the formula have to be changed. And therefore, it makes it really, really hard for them to change the, the, the entire model. So mortgage use uh, risk classic uh, to score, FICO 2, FICO 4, and FICO 5, which is the older model. They look at more in depth because think about it, you're, you're getting a, a loan for like 200,000, 300,000, 500 million dollar loan. So therefore, they're more cautious. That's why it takes longer to approve you for you to close for mortgage because it goes through uh, a lot of like scoring models uh, to get you all the information that they, well, to get them all the information to make sure that your credit worthiness, right? So obviously, you know, what I usually tell people to take away, th doesn't matter what square models they use, you wanna make sure you're building a, a behavior that no matter what score model, it's gonna be in your favor. For example, make sure payment on time on your credit cards, right? Your auto loan, your active accounts, Automatic payment is going to save you a lot of headache, right? Love, love that when you do that. I do that myself. It saves me a lot of headache uh, in the long run. Uh, make sure you're not applying for a lot of credit because, you know, that could show that you're hungry, could show you as a high risk to the lender. So minimize the application. Uh, utilization, your credit cards that you have out there that's reported on your credit, keep the utilization under 30% ideally. I mean, I recommend even 10% if you could keep it or lower. Um, what else? I mean, just make sure you're not closing your old credit card because the age is very, very important. Uh, make sure you have mixtures of different credit. So regardless, what I'm saying is that regardless of the different score model, which is there are a lot of score models out there within FICO itself. So you want to make sure that you're, you're minimizing stuff that's controllable in your end, automatically.